What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to College Football Talk with Peter Burtonette. And in today's episode, I'm going to be bringing you probably a little bit of a shorter episode. We'll see, we'll see where things go. Just kind of a thought exercise. My thoughts on the new alliance that was announced recently between the Big Ten and the SEC. I think it was a move that was probably expected. I know this, you know, the news came out a little bit earlier in the week, but it was finally able to take some time to kind of film this video and, and dive into what my thoughts are on this new alliance. But if you're going to enjoy this video, please feel free to leave a like, consider subscribing to the channel and turn on those post notifications. So you're always up to date whenever I post. But without further ado, let's dive into this. So earlier this week, the Big Ten and the SEC announced an alliance of sorts between the two conferences, and I think it's a step towards college football separating from the NCAA and really becoming probably one super mega conference, whatever you want to call it. I think it's what we've been heading towards in college football for a long time. Um, a lot of people will say, hey, you know, NIL is is a main catalyst for this. I think it's maybe also a case of the level of competition has kind of created a wider field between the teams that are up at the top and the teams that are, you know, just kind of middle of the road or and obviously the teams that are even further down. Um, I do think this past year, though, a team like Michigan winning the national title, obviously they had been progressing over the last couple of years, but being able to win the national championship was something that showcased that a team can kind of come out of the shadow, so to speak, and emerge on the top of college football. And I think I think Clemson did that too. But I do think also how it's been in college football is it really is there's this, there's this upper upper level of a teams like in Alabama, like a Georgia, like Ohio State, Michigan. You could say Washington and Oregon, the Pac-12, probably a little bit below the level of the first four teams I mentioned. But I think college football is in a place where it will be. I mean, we already have a separation of FBS and FCS and obviously the lower divisions as well. But I think it's 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 pretty clear that this is going to be something where it's a higher level, even in the FBS. And then it's kind of, you know, the lower level conferences like even an ACC, a Big 12, you know, and obviously then all the group of five conferences as well. And I feel like I'm probably not saying too much. So so what I kind of want to talk about more is what I think this will look like for college football and whether I think it's a positive or a negative or what maybe some of the pros and cons are with this move. I think it, it does create a product that will feel a bit more like the NFL. It'll feel a bit more professional, and there there are good things and bad things about that. It gives it gives the athletes on the good side an opportunity to make money that they have have been denied for so long until recently with with name, image, and likeness. Um, it also presents probably, hopefully, you know, the best chance for a high level of competition. The transfer portal too, tying that in, has kind of created the feeling of like free agency. Really, uh, I know a lot of traditionalists don't really like it in college football, and it kind of takes away an air of that amateurism. But I think, in terms of getting the best product on the field, that's what we're going to get. And I think it's gun going to be, you know, maybe it's a twenty-team conference, maybe it's thirty-two. I don't know what that number is going to be, but this kind of grouping of the Big Ten, the SEC, it might even be thirty-six. That number can grow. Um, I think really it'd be fun if we had some sort of uh, promotion and relegation from this Big Ten SEC and then, you know, the bottom four teams or something like that get demoted down to this kind of second level of of the traditional FBS. I don't think that's something that we're ever going to see in college football, but it's certainly something that European soccer, I think, gets right better than than any of our leagues here in the in the United States. So, so those are some of the positives. Then, then some of the negatives are, you know, that pageantry and that feel of college football that just has has a different air, a different aura than what the NFL has. I mean, it's it has over the years, oftentimes, not always. There's have been cer- certainly plenty of scandals over the years, but it's been something that's pretty, you know, just. It has that, you know, more pure feel to it, I guess. And then that's something that that's going away a little bit. I, I think it also takes away, you know, this alliance from schools that are in conferences, even like the Big 12 and the ACC. I imagine some of those teams probably make the jump to this conference, especially a Florida State, a Clemson. 
I think the Big 12 has probably had its biggest teams already make that leap, but maybe there's a couple of teams that get in to this mega conference in the near future. And, um, you know, it, it kind of does make you feel for a team like like a TCU, for example, who was able to make that run to the national championship. And maybe they're a team who gets into this this big, you know, this mega conference. But um, the other thing, too, is it, it's, you know, where when does this happen that the they really like, you know, right now it's more of like a, an announcement type thing. It's not so much tangible evidence of it. Uh, I'm sure we'll see more of that in the coming days and, and weeks and months and maybe even years. But I, I, I think overall, you know, I, I don't want to sit on the fence with this too much. Honestly, I, if I had to pick a side, I would say I'm more in favor of this. I think, you know, maybe it's because I've grown up in, in Big Ten country and I'd like to see, you know, the best football being played. But it, it does make me feel a bit for those programs being left left behind that that might not get into this you know this big deal college football. So it's certainly something that you know I also want to kind of dive into a little bit more. Maybe I'll have another video detailing more the specific the specific details about what this will look like. Um, right now, I'm just kind of you know speculating and and basing off some of the things that I've seen and just kind of what what college football has looked like, but. This coming year, you know, a 12 team playoff and expanding field of that is is another step in this process. And, and it is, you know, it's something where you don't want to see teams like like the group of 5 teams where they're going to have one guaranteed to get into the playoff, the highest ranked group of 5 get left out of this new Big 10 SEC thing where really most of the money is going to be. I mean, you look at a system even like the FBS versus FCS and Division 2 II and 3 and NAIA, you know, I I'll, I'll see if I could pull up the numbers so I can be exact with that. I would imagine probably 90% of the revenue from football programs comes from teams at the FBS level. And even more so, you know, that upper 1% only comes from probably like the schools that I mentioned earlier, or maybe those, those big conferences, Big Ten, SEC, and in the last, you know, several decades, the Big 12, ACC, and that the, the original Pac-12 as well. So it's something where if if it's something like like what what I mean I think of English soccer or football for 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 the people from from you know international maybe if they're watching this video where it's kind of there's a little bit of that you know money trickle down effect obviously most of the money goes to the teams that are in the Premier League England's top tier with 20 teams but then the championship has some of that trickle down cuz it's a pyramid system they're all still connected and so that's something where maybe if the NCAA can kind of clean up, you know, their relations with the players and even with some of the schools, then maybe they can govern over that. But I think it's more likely there's some new body. Maybe it is this this Big Ten SEC alliance that kind of looks over all of this and is able to spread out some of that money down to to the lower programs as well. So it's it's certainly a a major step in college football. I think this coming together, the Big Ten and SEC, is going to create the best product on the field. Again, at the expense of some of those of many of the smaller programs, smaller conferences around the country. But overall, I think it is a. In my opinion, I would side more on that it is a positive thing. There are drawbacks, of course, but I would, if I had to choose a side, I would say it is a more positive thing for college football, even if it does take away from some of the things that we love about college football. And those are, you know, it's it's just kind of a matter of if if you'd rather see the best product on the field, or if you would, you know, keep the tradition there and maybe not always the best product but those are my thoughts on it let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if there's any details that i missed out as well fill those in fill those in below i'll be looking over the comments um, but if you watched this point in the video or if you're new to the channel thank you so much for taking the time to watch college football talk i'm your host peter burnett signing out peace